Can your mind survive Crisis of Infinite Twilights? I ask, because, well, look who's the author. Yeah, it's Defender 22. You know, the guy who finds a way to break me every fic. Yeah, we're doing him again. Let's rock. Chapter 1, Princess Twilight. Every filly grew up wanting to be a princess. Oh, there were plenty who would deny it, of course. But they didn't make it any less true. They all looked up at the castle or stared at the name of the Princess Celestia and wondered, what if that was me? It didn't matter their temperament, or likes, dislikes, or what kind of home they grew up in. Each and every one of them considered, if only for a moment, what it'd be like. Just a glance at the small town of Ponyville, filled with its wide and varied array of mares, proved this theory true. If one had a mind reading machine, either built or stolen from Princess Luna's secret workshop, and used it to view the memories of the ponies that called the little hamlet home, you would find that each and every one of these mares, no matter how old or young, had dreamt the same dream. If only once. Just take, for example, the six mares who made up the elements of harmony. They fantasized about such things when they were young. Rarity, when she was four years old, saved her bits for a full three months to purchase a little plastic crown for the local toy store. It was gold with little plastic gems, and when pressed the ceremony's jewel, it would out for a little fanfare. Rarity spent the next year happily trotting around her house, holding court with her stuffed animals, while her father played the part of the faithful knight whenever his little filly asked him to. When Sleep Bell had baked for a crown of her own, Rarity held a special ceremony to induct the newest princess into the fold. Pinkie Pie, before seeing the rainbow had changed her life, and taught her that joy could come from within, no matter where one stood, and looked over the mountains, and dreamed of a castle where everyone smiled and there was laughter. She saw the parties and the excitement that would be held in court. Having no dolls of her own, she created her own nobility to join in the game of pretend, Pamela Floor, Rocky, and many others. Rainbow Dash would finally deny they were dreaming about frilly dresses. If one asked her, she would most likely fuck him into snooch for trying to claim she was into the fruit fruit stuff, and she would be in her right. She never dreamed of such things. But she had fixed herself in grand battle armor, leading her nation to nate victory over the Patrons. She had been a warrior princess, standing on the front lines, frowsing her shoulders to arms with grand speeches and even grander deeds. Applejack, too, was not one for girly bee and things. She liked to tussle about in the dirt and run along the fields as fast as she could so she could feel the wind against her face. She wasn't the one to have tea parties or braid the other bear's manes, but when her daddy had lifted her up on his back and called her his princess, she couldn't help but imagine the trees were her subjects the lands her kingdom. Sometimes, when no one was around, she would dream of those days and be her daddy's princess once more. Fluttershy had dreamed, too. Dreamed of having the power to look at the ponies that bullied her and Rainbow Dash, forcing them to apologize. She saw herself sitting on her throne, watching regularly as the list of sins those fillies and cults had made heaped upon her. Then they demanded, grovel, and beg for her forgiveness and pardon, lest they face the guillotine. Once she learned what a guillotine was, however, she let out a scream and had nightmares for a week. Then there was Twilight. Many of the mares of living at Ponyville. She knew best of all what life of a princess was like. First, there had been Cadence, who she hadn't even realized was a princess until much later in life, who told her all sorts of things about life in Carolot Castle. Her parents had always smiled when they returned home to find Twilight, performing waltzes to phantom music. Her eyes sat close as she dreamed herself twirling about the dance floor in the Grand Gallery Gala. When she had gotten her key mark, Twilight had moved to that very castle she heard so much about, and studied under Princess Celestia herself. How many little girls could honestly say their mentor was an actual princess? The answer was two. Herself at Sunset Shimmer, but Twilight didn't know that. Yes, the dates had been filled with dusty tomes and old scrolls, but Celestia had also taken Twilight along with her to court, letting the filly scribble drawings while Celestia dealt out justice and heard the pleas of her little ponies. It was only years later that she had learned that one or two of her crayon drawings had been done on scrolls brought before Celestia. The greatest insult the princess could think of for worthless proposals was to hand out to Twilight to use, while forcing her their rider to watch. She had talked with the Huff Bands and waited with nobility, rubbed flanks with visiting dignitaries from Griffinland to Tegaracia. 
Twilight had seen the inside of Celestia's private bed teamers and awoken to find her mentor with her mane in tangles and sleek crown in the corner of her eyes. She had not just seen the majesty of royalty, but the reality plain and simple. Yes, Twilight knew what a life as a princess was really like, and when she dreamed, she dreamed of changing that. She dreamed of using her station not as a ruler, but as an innovator, changing the lives of her subjects for the better through her experiments. She dreamed of not preserving the status quo, but improving on it. She saw Equestria as a grand invention that remained unfinished and waiting for the next brilliant mind to improve the design. Is it any wonder that when she was crowned Princess Twilight just three months earlier, she wasted no plot time in setting that plan into motion? She originally, after her coronation, moved back to Camelot with Spike. He had her own little castle with his own guards and servants and handlers to see her every need. They made a grand ballroom, and a pool, and a bedroom bigger than Secret Cube Corner. From the moment she woke up to the moment she went to bed, there was someone there, anticipating what she might need before she realized it. Might be a blanket, a cookie, or a flex capacitor, don't ask. They were also there to tell her that princesses don't spend all their days in a dark room looking through a microscope. They were there to pull her away from her books, remind her she needed to attend parties, visit nobles that wanted to honor her in the hopes of receiving a pregnancy. They told her to go get some fresh air, get some sun, not around in a dark room like some pathetic nerd. None of those words, of course. They didn't want to be decapitated, after all. Don't run, princess. Don't run for you. Let us touch that princess. Daddy to Thomas covered in dust. Please don't strain yourself for tempting that spell. We have plenty of guinea pigs to try it out. Groundquake, go get another case of guinea pigs and a, and a mop to clean up after they explode. Is it any wonder that in order to set her plan in motion, she fled to Ponyville? The Golden Oaks Library was still without a librarian, luckily for Twilight. Truth be told, there was little chance of the library finding anyone soon, as it simply wasn't a priority for Mayor Mayor. Turns out that the only pony who used the library was Twilight. And Rainbow Dash, once she learned that Fluttershy was the author of Daring Do, she simply had the Buttercream Mare send her advanced copies. The movers had never gotten around to moving all her equipment to the castle, mostly because the only movie company in Ponyville was still dealing with the lawsuit Derpy had filed for unjust termination. Another day used to be a religious holiday! She complained to the judge. The old tree served as the perfect place for Twilight to hide out and work on her experiments in peace. Without dealing with a hundred different points, all telling her she shouldn't attempt to break the laws of physics. Pinkie Pie exists! She told him a few days back after he got rather vocal. Thus, physics is already shattered! She convinced her guards that she would be in fine in her library, did not need them standing right beside her. They grumbled a bit at that, but when she reminded them that even Princess Celestia had come from time to time to Ponyville without an escort, he enforced the conceit to the point and leave her be. Uh, Twilight? Spike said nervously, standing to the side. He was dressed in a standard Twilight is experimenting gear a football helmet, hockey pads, Isolated up in midst and a jock strap of a cup. Are you sure this is safe? Of course it is safe, Spike, Twilight said, taking over the Bunsen burn that was bubbling away. Do you think I would perform a spell that might be dangerous? Well, there was the what it needs spell, star swirl spell, that one time you tried to chant the cutie marker sayers it used to summon that old god. Yes, yes, but this time it is different. Back then, I was either under stress or doing research for Princess Celestia. And we sent Master Darcy back to his planet. Nothing here is dangerous. By itself, Spike said as he away from her. But pretty sure you shouldn't be performing five experiments at once. The main section of the library had seen its tables of tears cleared away to allow Twilight more space to work. The Spikes left sat the Mirror of Worlds, the same one that led to the strange dimension where ponies were bipedal ape-like creatures and he was a dog. A laser was pointing at the mirror. A quiet hum filling the air as the machine slowly ratcheted up the power of the beam. Left of this were several vials of water from the underground pool that had resulted in the infestation of pinkies. After several points had pointed out that Twilight had kind of committed murder 30 times over, the newly minted princess had decided to see if this were the case and test the magic within the pool. On a separate table was a swirly orb that kept changing colors. One of it came an ounce of discards chaos magic. Wait! An orb? Swirly colors? An ounce of Discord's chaos magic? Oh my friggin' Celestia! It's the orb of reality! 
But how? How did the open reality wind up here in this funny fit? This is scary. Once Twilight had gotten by buttering up Fluttershy, not literally, though, much of the sadness of stallions everywhere, this card had warned her that it was impossible to understand his magic, but Twilight was determined to figure out what made Discord different from the rest of his family. The elemental deities, such as Celestia, Luna, Fuzzy Thinker, Xena, and Tidal, all commanded a single physical object, and thus their magic was easy to understand, while those such as Cadence and Chrysalis controlled the abstract powers. Love and drama, to be precise. There was a rhyme and reason to their powers. On a cutting board next to an orb were scrapings of blue paint. To any point that didn't know better, it would appear to be just like any paint that one might use on their house or barn. But this paint was special. Twilight had managed to scrape it from Dr. Hose's blue box. A radiation spell she had been trying out a week ago had alerted her to the fact that the box was giving off strange spikes of energy. Twilight couldn't resist learning the truth behind these readings. And possibly about the strange stallion who kept talking about timing wimey stuff. Finally, sitting on the opposite of the room were the elements of harmony. When Twilight first met her friends, found the items, she immediately accepted the fact that these artifacts held great power. But as time went on, she needed to use the elements again and again. Twilight had become intrigued by the way the elements seemed to have a different effect on any living beings. Princess Luna had been purged of her darkness by the elements. When Discord had turned to stone, Twilight assumed the elements reacted to the inner goodness of their being. If there was punished, and if there was enough, they were redeemed. Yet Fluttershy had proven that Discord did have some good inside him. And Celestia and Luna had explained to Twilight that when they first sealed Discord away, their adopted father, Lord Tidal of the Capricorns, had pinned the Chaos God down and had been struck by the elements too, only for it to have no effect, for ill or for good, upon the old sea goat. And then there was Twilight herself. When she and the alternate dimensional version of her friends had used the elements, they briefly turned into hybrid pony humans. Such powerful, seemingly random magic demanded her attention, and Twilight was finally going to get some answers. Why can't you just do these experiments one at a time? Spike whined. Twilight laughed. <laughs> Spike, I'm a princess now. That means I can multitask better than any normal pony can. It would be a waste of time to do each spell one after the other. This way, I get all my results at the same time. I'm going to hide in the basement, okay? I don't know about this, gonna live. Nora's Pegasus Billy glared at the apple bloom as she checked over the ramp one last time. They were just outside of Ponyfield proper, in the grassy plains that were perfect for romping and playing. The Golden Oaks Library was nearby, but not close enough they had to worry about keeping their voices down. On this day, the Kiwi Mark of Sears were not out looking for the Kiwi Marks. No. Today was all about school and our most daring stunt yet. Apple Bloom, trust me. I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't safe. Sleep Owl's brow furrowed. Well, if that were true, we wouldn't do half of the things we do do. Apple Bloom snickered. <laughs> Don't get sleep, just like they do. Well, that's what we're discussing what we do do. We're in a different place, sleep. Like, you know, card play. Is that we do do? Never mind, Apple Bloom said, turning back to Skulu. I just don't think we should be doing this without no several reasons. What are you got hurt? Hey, leave up to ask us this stuff all the time. Didn't he end up in the hospital last year with broken wings? Sleep Bell asked. Sprayed, but that doesn't matter. Skulu grabbed her scooter and began to circle her friends. No guts, no glory. You go for the go glory, you will have the guts, Apple Bloom pleaded. You'll be all on the ground. So you nodded. I think the other balloon's right. This is really dangerous. If you do this, you might... Wait, I just got it! Did you? The white uniform and Philly got out of Oh, I had to tell Barry you got one. He loves high brown humor. So I love that double lace. Evelyn pleaded. Who are frightened for a friend's safety? Every time you try one of these stunts, they fail quicker to graze girl after a big deer. But today's the day, Scooter said, narrowing her eyes. I just know it, Spike! Twice as he moved towards the chaos orb. Today is the day! I know I've said it before, but this is it. I feel it in my heart. And yes, I suffer fast, but and many a cruel start. But today, yes, today is the day. Skulu, putting on her goggles and dusting her Alice. 
Others say, don't get your hopes up. What if this is just like all the best? But I refuse to give up now. For today, I'll give it my best. Yes, for today is the day. Twilight, checking over her calculations to make sure they're all right. I know that this is my moment when I finally achieve my heart buckle. goal. There'll be no missteps till every mess dying and in full. That yes, today is the day. Schooler, examining your schooler and make sure it's working. There could be no backy dack now. I commit and I have set about this path. And those demons are playing me, so finally feel my breath. Because today is today. Spike standing in their face with doorway, watching nervously. Are you sure you're thinking about this? Sleeve out standing around the blue city from hope to hope. We just don't want to see you hurt. Twilight so whirls around, wings spread down. I will finally get my results, Skulu. Things over her handlebars, with wings beginning to beat. I'll finally lead the dirt. Twilight, Skulu. Twilight dancing around her experiment. Skulu rances around a rev, goes flying in the air. For today, yes, today is the day. I have given my very all. Ignore all the doomsayers that said no. I gave my blood, sweat, and tears. So now I give it a go. Yes, today, yes, today, yes, today, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the crap. Twilight fits around as the window shattered. School crashes her room. Her little orange body striking tables and the many different instruments. Speakers went flying in the air. Several machines began to spark and spew smoke up towards the second story of the library. The laser that had been hitting the mirror shifted, causing the reflective surface to bounce the beam through the pool of wire before hitting the chaos orb. The massive spear cracked and raw anarchy spilled out, thrusting about the library like a manticore with the trots. The paint for the doctor's blue box liquidized and sprayed all over the place while the elements of harmony charged up and filled the room with rainbow-colored light. This is all your fault! Twilight and Skulu shouted at each other. Spike eyes whining as the entire library exploded, the doors of the basement slamming into them, setting it toppling into darkness. No, Rainbow, no. I don't want to go to the Rainbow Factory, Skulu mumbled. The orange filly blinked her eyes, the real world tugging her from her dream. She slowly rose, grimacing lightly. It felt as if her entire body was one big bruise. Oh, cloud dust! The good news was that the library was still standing. The bad news was nothing inside the library was still standing. Bookcases had been toppled, the stairs had been shattered, the windows were blown out to the tables, reduced to kindling. There were glass on the floor, puzzled of what school Lou prayed was putting staining the floorboards, and the air was filled with a scent of roses, and the electric smell of one experienced right before a big storm. The doors and walls were blackened, and the ceiling looked like a full head hoof painted in a mural up there. I am so grounded. Yeah. School's eyes went wide, even her pupils became the sign of pinpricks. I blew up a princess! Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap! She rushed over to where the moaning was coming from and began to frankly dig through the debris. I am so getting banished! Or turn to stone! Or turn to stone! Then banished in some place where the pony sees stones! Who's gonna do this, you Skulu? Twilight asked, her head popping out of the debris. You are Twilight! Skulu's jaw dropped as she knows several things at once. Twilight was the same size as her. Twilight sounded just like a filly. Twilight was a fine fake. Double cloud dust! Skulu whimpered. Next chapter. Twilight! Oh, this is bad. This is really bad, Skulu said, pacing in circles, her little wings buzzing and hesitation. Bad, 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 Very, very bad, Twilight Echo, looking around the white berry. I am in so much trouble, Skulu whispered. Ew. Twilight practically screams, dropping a twisted piece of metal that I either been a picture frame or a wrench. What about me? My brother's gonna kill me. Don't worry, we can figure this out, Skulu said quickly. Looking around the room, trying to convince herself things were as bad as they appear. We just need to play ahead. They need to fight the room up into subjects and. Wait, what are you talking about? Skulu stopped this and watched as Twilight took up a pacing herself. Why would your brother care? Why would he care? Twilight cried out, her little body trembling in fear. 
He's gonna come home and see my future library. He's gonna be so mad since he told me the last time we could see him that I need to be more careful. He's gonna ground me and I won't be able to hang out with you girls and I'll never get my kitty mark. Clyde paused. I assume he had tears with Luke's family. <laughs> Don't worry, Twilight. I'm a Kevin. Spike cried out, bursting through the blackened basement door. He swung a plunger around wildly. The football helmet he was wearing dipped down to cover his eyes. What evil did you unleash? I'll stop it! Let me out! Let me out! Ta -ta -da -da! Dragon power! Skiller ducked down. Dossie Spike's attack, letting the baby dragon attack a coat rack. So, maybe it was a good thing he attacked it. Twilight never wore coats, so the presence of a rack designed for coats is just sinister. Wait! Twilight said, her tears distantly drying up and a grin forming on her lips. She threw her four legs out wide, gesturing towards the mess. Maybe this is definitely knocking! Huh? Skilla said, clipping her neck to try to soothe the pain for her emotional whiplash. The purple filly was bouncing down, up and down in glee. Maybe we were supposed to make this mess so we could clean it up! Then we discovered we're really good at cleaning things up, and we get our ki ki our clean cutie marks! Silly Twilight started over to the closet and yanked out a broom with dustpan. Cutie mark could say it was super cleaners! Ying! Skilla watched all this happen. A few minutes looked at her face. Spike was drastic about, destroying anything that had been untouched by the explosion, while Philly that looked like Twilight ran after him, trying to clean up what he broke, shouting encouragement because, as he put it, the bigger a mess, the bigger the better cutie mark. Try was the operative word, as Twilight's magical abilities had dismissed as much as her body. Books were haphazardly stapled back together with two different covers. Faces were reassembled, looking like no vase Skilu had ever seen, as he was pretty sure that black paint was not a spot remover. Despite how much Twilight sprayed it all over the walls, where she got said paint, no one knew. Uh, Twilight? Twilight! Skilu said, trying to get the Philly's attention. Twilight! What? Twilight said, stopping with her broom and hovering in the air. What's wrong? Well, you'll see you. It's Spike! Skilu reached over for Spike to stop squeaking the puncher around. Sit down and we go over some things, okay? Do I go? Spike asked, looking at the cards. Well. I must have messed them up good! Yeah, sure you did. Now come on, sit! Scooby said with a little smile. Twilight corked his eyebrow, but tried over and sat down next to Spike, who, upon seeing her, kept resting his hand on his head and moving it towards Twilight, measuring their height difference, or like thereof. Now, why do you take a deep breath in Twilight? Why do you keep calling me that? Twilight blurted out. Scooby resisted the urge to scream. Realizing how ironic it was for her, of all ponies, to be mad about some pony in her sort of tense span. Call you what? Scooby has gritted her teeth. Twilight, only the princesses call me that. She screwed up her nose. And that's usually when I've done something bad. They do, Scooby said. Yeah, you know. Scoo Twilight tried to adapt a voice that sounded like Celestia's. Twilight Sparkle, what are you doing up at this hour? Or, Twilight Sparkle, the Lady of Zabrika's Cherry is not a toy. Twilight shook her head. Ponies only call me Twilight when I'm in trouble. Am I the only one who finds it odd I was having to do a bad imitation of Twilight Sparkle, doing an imitation of Celestia when I normally do a Celestia voice? What do we call you then? Spike asked, for the first time realizing that something was seriously wrong with his boss, friend, mother figure, master, enslaver, hero, life partner. It all depended on who you ask. Twilight! The Philly Five Unicorn Sailor Grand. My brother always calls me that, and you guys just picked it up. Okay, Twilight, Scooby said, feeling very awkward saying that name. Why don't you tell us all about yourself? Tell us your life story. Twilight's brow furrowed. Ah, uh, why? You already know it. Scooby blinked. Err. So you can try for your life story telling Cutie Mark, Spike said, glancing get Scooby and giving her a not so subtle wink. And then falls him slowly turning towards her, flashing a cheesy smile, and shutting one eye while he's saying, Wink. The face is glared out. Her mouth opened to retort that no pony would be stupid enough to King my life story killer! Slightly screamed quickly. Scooby huffed. Fear not that easy a trick! She muttered four legs across her chest. Apparently you are, Spike whispered. Twilight cleared her throat. Ahem. <clears throat> I was born in Canada. My parents are Twilight Velvet and Nightlight. Mom and Dad do a lot of government work for the princesses. I think their names are something I don't know. It's all boring stuff. So my big brother watches me most of the time. That's why I moved here when the princesses sent him to Ponyville. 
sit him, Scooter asked. Twilight nodded. Yep. She leaned it towards Scooter and whispered. Good, good. Keep pretending you don't know any of this. It's great practice. She pulled away to continue her story. When I was a foal, my brother, Shining Armor, saw Princess Celestia riding the sun at the Summer Sun Celebration, and that got him interested in magic. He studied really hard and got a try in front of the board of Princess's school. I don't really know what happened. On the day he had Steve there, Spike, and both of you went to live in the castle. Spike nodded. Yeah, that sounds right. It's so very odd for the baby dragon to hear this tale. It was a story he knew well when the main players had been changed. So what then happened? Twilight got really excited, her body busting up and down to the next part. I was sitting with you and trying to the castle, trying to avoid the princess. She is kind of creepy, you know, always hanging around, staring at me. One of the guards once muttered that she was a pedophile, which is nuts, because who cares about flying pilot felt? Twilight shrugged. Well, anyway, my brother began to investigate the legend of Nightmare Moon on day, and got all excited when he looked that she was coming back to take over the world! Twilight frowned. Well, not excited like he ain't into the world, you know what I mean. When he told Princess Celestia, she didn't believe him and told him he had to set up the Summer Sun celebration, probably because she was too busy filing rose petals or something. Twice face screwed over the pout. The whole sign means she doesn't ignore the dumb old princess and go catch Nightmare Moon ourselves. He can't listen, of course, so he had to come here. Spike shook his head, marveling at how different Twilight was from Twilight. You really don't like Princess Celestia. Twice scoffed. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Big deal. She raises the sun up. I could do that too if I wanted to. I just don't want to. She got a stubborn huff. What's covered spike stickers? And that other one. The pink one that is always eyeing my brother. Mommy says he's a crayon robber. So, what happened next? Scoot the press. Well, next we managed to Pinkie Pie. She's a strange pony. She just screamed and darted away. We found out later she was excited because we were new and she was playing a pie. I told Shiny she was cuckoo with a woo woo, but he said that was impolite. Twilight scuffed her hope against the ground. He's always telling me to be nicer and stuff, but I really try, but sometimes it's really hard. Not my fault that my TR won't come near me. It was accidental magic that floated her into the potty and gave her a swirly. Not me! Really? Scooter said, raising an eyebrow. I think she could have seen that. Twilight flashed her the most delicate look at Scooter. The Norse Pegasus could practically see the halo over her head. This was not a good sign. Halo Ayas was a deadly scourge. Get tested today! You audience are so glad that you can't see him right now. He is so smiling up a storm! Well, it is weird to be on the receiving end of that, Scuba muttered before mostly for Twilight to continue. So then we went to Sweet Apple Anchors. I didn't want to stay because I thought we should go bop night your moon in the nose, but Shiny said we needed to stay for lunch because it was a nice thing to do, Twilight. The Philly Lyle scoffed. Hmm. Shiny could be such a goody goody. She looked down by her life. It wasn't too bad, especially dead since that's why I met Alma Blue. Twilight rubbed her tiny. But I did eat way too much pie. Anyway, we then went back to town and met you and Rainbow Dash. School was stopped herself from frowning. When Nightmare Moon had appeared, Scootaloo hadn't met Rainbow Dash yet. It would only be after the events became known to the public that Scootaloo would discover her idol. Tales of Rainbow Dash's exploits during that crisis, followed by the Sonic Rain Boom, was to mentor as the coolest thing since ice cream sandwiches in Scootaloo's mind. She was doing some tricks and you were carrying her on. We, uh, we kind of got in a fight when I said my brother was cooler than Dash, but we made up, right? Twilight looked up bashfully. Of course! Scooter said, giving the purple unicorn a hug. So, at the rainbow with me? Twilight began to rattle off the fence reverently. Well, there was Raggy and Sweetie Belle. Then we met Fluttershy, who was helping out Pound. Twilight blessed the little Scoob, but the earth is sing, Twilight has a boyfriend. Mostly because, as far as he knew, Pound wasn't a half year old yet. They took us to the library where Pinky and Pound's sister Pumpkin had set up a huge party for us. Shiny so needed to go to bed early, but I couldn't get much sleep. Well, with every pony pinned the tail on the pony. Billy's face dark and slightly began to shift. And the bad stuff happened to me. Well, you know, it was my fault we were taken. Taken? The nightmare moon. Well, I said quietly. I saw nervously chewing on a piece of gum. She appeared out of nowhere and began to monologue. Monologue? School asked. You know, I'm an evil villain. This is my evil plan, blah, blah, blah. Play rolled her eyes. My evil villain's monologue. 
Because it's fun. School of Adventure. Hey, did she have big mirror wings and have a dry hand accent? School of Adventure, tongue annoyance. No, that would be stupid. Play it down. I tried to find her magic when she grabbed me, but... School of this isn't fun anymore! Twilight looked up in tears and eyes. We said we were going to talk about, never going to talk about this, never. You promised! Okay, okay. School said quickly, waving four legs in a panic. If there was one thing the orange pagans just couldn't handle, it was when Billy's pride, or Colt's. But the only time she'd seen that happen was when Steps and Snails had read that issue of Bat Stallion where Colt Wonder died. A slight Twilight. Please don't cry. Twilight not. Okay. She instantly fucked up. Woo! Maybe we can try our host of cleaning now. I want to see if I can get a clean cutie mark. Thank you, specialized. You know, a dusty cutie mark or a sleepy cutie mark? Go ahead and get started, Skiller said, backing away. Spike and I just need to, uh, come up with what story we're going to tell your brother when he gets here. Okay! That's why I said happily, grabbing a dust panel in her mouth and drawing over to small piles of rubble. How I shouldn't use this, she touched her horn. Oh, this just would be easier if I could use it with my magic. I don't get why Shiny says I can't use it when he's not around. After all, I managed to blow things up without it! Spike leaned in close to Skooloo. Once he gets the purple unicorn got to work. Okay, this is seriously freaky. No, it's like she's led an entirely different life. Spike's eyes went wide. Do you think she's a- Do not say zombie! Skooloo warned. Has I really become that predictable? Spike complained. Skooloo rolled her eyes. Once he gets slightly expected a cushion that had several burn marks on it. She flipped it over a place on the blackened chair and went on, hoping her brother wouldn't notice. Something weird is going on, though. What do you think we should do, then? Spice said, I think ponies will notice when they see the newest princess is spending her days in elementary school. We'll just have to do our best to keep this quiet until we have a better idea of what happened. As long as the two of us are the only ones who know what happened, CRASH! Skula and Spike turned around, eyes wide as several ponies dressed in black cat suits looked at the library. Their horns glowing as they inspected the area. I have two civilians, Agent Colson! Castle. The baldy stallion says he entered the library. He was wearing a dark suit and a pair of sunglasses, looking around the cards. It's the cops! Spike screamed, leaving up. Quick! Flush your sash! He ran towards the bathroom, only to get caught in the grasp of a strong stallion. Please! Let me go! I was just holding that down for a friend! I'll dark on him! I'll... <sighs> Mike it, Mike it, think of Mike it, think of Mike it. <sighs> okay. I'll dark on him! If you want, just. That fight never got to finish. As the stallion puts the spray can in his face and blasted the baby dragon with a crown of green fuse. I didn't. Ugh. Did you already? I swear. Spike fell to the ground in a heap. Spike! Skooloo shouted, throwing towards the near... The near scar and punching him in the leg. The little yelp began to dance around while Skooloo tossed the spellfire director away. Twilight, help! Twilight nodded. Give my crusaders! Home defenders! Yeah! She ran with her head down, horn biting to gaze at Colson's legs, and her tongue down. Get out of my brother's library! I'm afraid I can't do that, sweetie. A newly arrived dark blue stallion said... He was wearing a cat suit like the others, except over his head in one long black cloak. His right eye was covered by an eye patch, but his left was unblocked. Look down at Twilight, who stopped dead in her tracks. Then? Twilight said, shock, before one of the agents gassed her. Daddy? Skulu exited confused, <laughs> only to receive a face full of fumes for her troubles. Ugh! I! I! I'm coming, Elizabeth! He slurred before crumbling into a heap. Oh god, why did I agree to do this? I could have done something saner! But nope! You think this is bad, guys? You should wait until I do the God Squad.